Bingo. The trap shuts fast enough to catch a fly. In 1964, a paper was presented at the American Academy of Pediatrics meeting in New York City, mentioning a number of abnormal symptoms in young children referred to as the tired child syndrome. The severity of these symptoms seemed to be directly related to the amount of time the individual children spent watching television. These abnormal conditions were thought to be caused by an over-psychological stimulation resulting from the program content, that is, too many Western thrillers and murder mysteries. However, suspecting that x-rays from the TV sets might also be a possible contributing factor, I placed some bean plants in front of a TV six hours each weekday and 10 hours on Saturdays and Sundays, the same amount of time that the children were watching their TV sets. The bean plants on the right were protected with a solid lead shield that would stop x-rays and show the same amount of growth as control plants placed at a distance of 50 feet. The bean plants on the left were shielded only with black photographic paper that would stop all visible light but would have no effect on the x-rays. You see an extremely stimulated growth with the leaves two and a half or three times the size of the lead shielded plants. The plants near the top or above the TV set showed the roots emerging from the soil whereas the roots of the plants near the bottom or below the TV set follow their normal downward growth pattern. This has some very far-reaching implications, indicating that gravity may not be the controlling factor in the downward growth of the roots of plants, but that they may be growing away from the general background radiation that normally comes only from overhead because of the shielding effect of the massive amount of earth beneath. Next, I place some young white rats directly in front of the TV set with the same time periods as both the bean plants and the children exhibiting the tired child syndrome symptoms. Through semi-time-lapse photography, partially speeding up the action, you can see that the young rats on the left, protected only with the black photographic paper, became aggressive and more difficult to manage, whereas those on the right, protected with the lead shield, remained perfectly normal and docile. Autopsies were performed on all of these animals, which showed brain tissue damage in those protected only with the black paper, but not in those protected with the lead shielding. In another experiment, it was found that all of the TV sets in the homes of a group of hyperactive children being sent to a special adjustive educational center were giving off various amounts of x-rays, and when these sets were repaired or discarded, all of the children, within a period of only a few months, showed sufficient improvement so that they could be returned to their regular classes. In 1968, I was asked by Paramount Pictures to make the time-lapse sequences of geraniums and other flowers for a film on a clear day featuring Barbara Streisand. I found that the geraniums would grow very well indoors under the new type full-spectrum fluorescent tubes that more closely duplicate natural sunlight. However, they seem to grow noticeably better near the center of the tubes than at the ends where the cathodes are located. After I had finished all of the pictures for On a Clear Day, I placed two of the large fluorescent fixtures, each holding 10 eight-foot tubes, outdoors, end to end. Bean seeds planted in pots placed near this concentration of the cathodes showed a stunted, distorted growth compared to the seeds planted in pots and placed near the center of the tubes. Here you see the difference in the growth responses. When the pots were protected with a lead shield, the bean seeds grew normally. However, when they were protected with an aluminum shield, the bean seeds continued to show the same type of stunted and distorted growth. This suggests a low level or trace amount of x-rays, even though none could be detected with conventional x-ray measuring equipment. When I place bean seeds on wet cotton, Near the concentration of all these cathodes, the shoots showed a random directional growth, some turning upwards, some sidewards, and a few downwards. But when I shielded the seeds with lead foil, all the shoots followed their normal downward directional growth. In another experiment, time-lapse cameras were used in a standard first grade classroom, and several hyperactive children may be noted, especially the boy in the immediate foreground.
Ninety days after, the regular cool white fluorescent tubes were replaced with the new type full spectrum fluorescent tubes with radiation shields, there was a marked improvement noted, and the extremely hyperactive boy has voluntarily moved up to the front row. He raises his hand for recognition and is now up at the blackboard uh, taking part in classroom activities. Prior to the time that this new lighting was installed, this particular boy had an extreme learning disability problem, but quickly learned to read within 90 days after the new lights were installed. There was further noted a general average improvement in both the behavior and academic achievement of the entire class. There are, however, other factors that must also be considered. The implications of the biological effects of light and radiation as observed through time-lapse photography are obvious. I sincerely hope that what started strictly as a hobby and intended only for entertainment purposes may help stimulate further greatly needed scientific studies in this very important area of research. This is a petri dish of Physarum polycephalum a slime mold that makes an ideal organism for cellular research. Ordinarily, it grows on decaying wood out in the forest, but growing it in the laboratory is a different matter.